Hello. How are you? Hi, Jan. How's it going? Sorry, I'm a little late. <laughs> Happy Saturday. Just getting my um, thread changed. I was uh, working on yet another cupcake. This one's going to be a pup cake. Get it? <laughs> I have so many cupcakes and pie slices right now. It's kind of funny. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them all. Can you guys all see me and hear me okay? Let's see, I think this, I don't really have the ideal thread for this fabric, but um, I think this will work. So we're sewing another bow line today, um, which we sewed on Thursday and went together really fast. And um, now I'm kind of obsessed with getting the fit right. I mean, it fit, it felt good. It just did a couple quirky things that I want to work on. Awesome, thanks Ida. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> so what are you guys working on? Are you guys cutting or sewing or anything or maybe knitting? I've been craving knitting lately. May I'm like nervous to start a knitting project because I, I am a finisher and I think, oh, what if I start it and then I don't finish it or something, you know? So maybe I should start with a small project and see if I'll finish it. The thing is, I'm a finisher, so I know I'll finish it. <laughs> There's that. All right, let me, um, I'm just going to sew on here a little bit. Hello. That'll work. And then I have to test my serger too. Ah, you're, you're using up your data, Jan? <laughs> Hello, hubby. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Drive safe. It's so nice, like, the, the I mean, car rides have improved tremendously since I was a kid, you know? Like, my kid has no clue what a long car ride was like before a phone or something like that. You know what I mean? And I know there's people that would argue, yeah, but you don't take in the countryside, and that's just kind of part of the experience. I agree with that, but um, at the same time, there's a lot of uh, times where, you know, sleeping all day in the car, that's what you do, right? You just sleep then when you were a kid. So, my tooth feels funny. I like you checking it so let's see here let me um so here's the one i um finished with you guys on uh thursday so um i like i got so many really great positive comments on those po those posts and it cracks me up because i'm I, I was worried about looking like i'm tearing down the pattern or something because i'm you know like refining the fit hi mullen um but i just like like when i see it on other people it did the, the pleat seem like it was staying there. Maybe they were just arranging it and then taking the picture. That's the point of home sew catwalk, right? So you can see it in action and see does it actually do that when you're like moving around, you know? And so my thing is that this dart right here, it doesn't sit under the pleat on me. You know, it's doing this. You know, it's it's like out here. When I'm looking down, it's okay. Um, like it just looks like a gentle fold but I know that's not what it is. I know it's a dart. So um, today I actually moved this point into this, towards the pleat two inches. So I think that'll hide it better. And then um, I worked on the armhole a lot because I don't like how it's bunching up and sitting up here, you know? And it does that on the cover of the pattern and in the pictures on the website. So maybe it's just supposed to do that, but that, you know, for me, I would rather fit better. So what I did was I moved the armhole one inch towards the body, front and back. And then I also raised up the armhole, this point up here, and brought it closer to the body. So we'll see. I may have made too drastic of an adjustment. <laughs> oh, you know what, Beverly? I love my Caroline pajama bottoms. They're my favorite pajama bottoms. And you know, there's something about the fabric I use by that company in the beginning fabrics is just great. Hi Terry, hi Cheyenne, how's it going? What is flannelette? Is that just like a um, one-sided flannel? 
Why does, why does it feel funny right there? All right, so let's see. Here are my pieces. So I decided not to put a waistband on this one because I think that this top would be kind of cute just hanging free as well. Yeah, you can't watch your phone, Ida, um, or read in the car. Yeah, I'm kind of with you there. Sometimes I can play a game on my phone, but I can't even do that for very long. I listen to a book, though. I, I, that's what I like to do. Cozy cotton flannelette. Oh, okay. Hmm. I've heard of it, but I can't remember why I'd heard of it. You know what I mean? Maybe if I could remember that. <laughs> Okay, so wait, here, let, these are my sleeves, right? Yep, yep, sleeves, cuffs, neckband. Is that you there? Front, back. So if I remember correctly, we have, we do the front, we do a sleeve, and then we do the back, and then a sleeve, right? And we do this sleeve right here. I'm gonna follow the directions because I feel like I'm gonna be like all cavalier, like I made this now, I already know how to do this, you know? <laughs> but then I'll make a big old mistake. So I'm gonna follow the directions. And I remember first off, we sew our sleeve to the body. I really need like a little cookbook holder. At least it's nice and tiny. I love how small these instructions are. I know that this wouldn't be ideal for a lot of people, but I love how small they are. <laughs> Soft like winter pajamas and sheets, super warm. Not not for California, yeah. Oh, you're doing an A-line skirt, Terry. Why is my um, camera like in the way of the chat? Oh, I know why, I know why. I won't move that. I know why. This is why streamers have um, two, two, com two computer monitors and I do not want two computer monitors. That's just too much, you know? Ooh, yeah, Terry. I love A-line skirts on the bias. I know. I love this fabric combo, too, Ida. I love these colors. <laughs> so cool. I know. I've been wanting, I've been kind of chomping at the bit to cut these fabrics, so I really hope that it'll <laughs> work in this pattern. This fabric is, I'm not going to say it's boardy, because it's not. It's actually pretty drapey for being, like, it's, a, it's really hard to see this side, but it's the exact same face as this side, which looks like a knit. Um, so it's double faced. And they had this in a few colors. So you can use either side. You could do really fun color blocking. You know, I'm even considering like hemming it to the front like this, um, you know? So I I think it's in, it's called Italian. I think one of these was called Italian wool or both of them. This is a yarn dyed stripe. It's lighter weight than this, but not not much. So the drapiness of this is really different than that merino jersey, but um, I think it's just gonna, I think it's gonna be great, so. Wait, I just saw the glide jacket, Malin. Oh yeah, it's on your on your feed. So that fabric you got, that soft shell fabric, is that um, polar fleece on the inside? My husband loves a soft shell um, jacket. He likes it because they're usually, like usually soft shells are, um, they have a wind breaking you know, component to the fabric, you know? So even if it's not waterproof, at least um, it's a, it, like, it's still soft and cozy, but breaks the wind, you know? So it doesn't like freeze you when you're out there. And it's not like as beefy as like something that's waterproof because sometimes those can be kind of warm if they're not a breathable material because all the seams are sealed. It's like, you know, like basically wearing like a plastic sack, you know? So. <laughs> for lack of a better description. All right, so um, let's, uh, I think my first, let's see, my first one, I sew the sleeve on, and then do I, and then I do the back, and then we do the neck binding, and then we start the, the um, on this machine. So um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, get all these pieces ready. So we're gonna do sleeve, back, neck binding. All right, cool. Let's see here. Yeah, I think that fabric looked really cool though. Where'd you find that? That, that was a really, really unique fabric. All right, let me uh, test my serger out a little bit. 
I did put my serger on some flannel. Tell me if it actually helps. I doubt it's going to help on the noise. That's pretty good. Let's see how it is with the lighter weight to the Italian wool. It's a little loose on the edge right here. Um, I might, if I tighten it, it might be too much. Let's see. Hey, Vicky, how's it going? Let's see here. I'll just cut this off. Yeah, that looks better. Great. I picked this really dark thread because this is the inside. All right. Here's our front. Oops, I knew that would happen. Here's my sleeve. Here's my neckband. I can't wait to get to the fun part of the pleat. It's pretty satisfying to make. Oh, it came in green and blue, too. You're hiding the bright pink, though? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of neons, but lately I am I think I just sew enough that I'm like, everything's kind of a fun thing. And I'm always surprised at how um, I end up liking something that I probably wouldn't have picked before. So I feel, I feel like I'm getting more open to some of that. It doesn't mean if it's when it's in my closet, it's the first thing I'm going to pick, though, you know? This is a little thicker, so I need to put that under my presser foot. All right. I'll tell you what, the problem with putting this on this flannel is it's moving. I used to always put my serger on um, those like non-skid things for your a rug, you know? So I haven't put that back just because it keeps moving around and maybe I should put it back now. Now that it's kind of sitting here the longest it has, you know? Yes, yeah, clingy, the soft shell is, yeah, it can be, Ida. Hi, Rachel. Awesome. <laughs> your YouTube froze, I'm sorry. Have you tried exiting and re re refreshing? That's a bummer. That happens to me sometimes too. All right, so I'm gonna put the neck band. So you fold it wrong sides together and then line up these edges. And I'm just gonna go for it. Last time I kind of clipped it and all that, but it ended up being pretty easy to put on here. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm gonna feed it under there first though. Come on. There we go. All right, let's look at this. Ooh, look at how good those look together. Yay. Looking for my halfway point, which is about right here. Come on. Had a little trouble getting it started. Let's see, I'm gonna push my uh, sleeve, seams to the sleeve. All right, that doesn't cause me issues later. 
Like, I don't need him to go the other way, right? I don't think so. Yeah, right? <laughs> Darn smart gadgets. They're so dumb sometimes. Hi, Eliza. How's it going? That's great, Melon. Yeah, I don't have problems with some of the soft shells clinging, but I kind of know what Ida means. I have a, a question for you folks that um, live outside of the United States. Let me finish surging and I'm going to ask you. I just thought of it. I, I thought I could ask you. Okay, that was really easy. I didn't need to um, clip that at all. So, um, oh, cool. You guys got the pumpkin vegetables. So, for you guys outside the U.S. that use, um, is it A4 paper, right? Is the like the standard paper in your printer at home that you print out, you know, your pages on, whatever. Um, I keep wanting to say AO paper, which, which is different, but the A4, hi, Maribel. It's A4, right? Um, say you buy a pattern from someone in the States and they give you a PDF pattern or and then you get the instructions and the instructions are on, eight and a half by 11 inch sheets of paper. What happens if you print those? Does it print and just like, like do anything weird? Does it just print at eight and a half by 11 inches on the A4 paper? Um, because my pin cushion pattern pieces are on just like inside the instructions, like eight and a half by 11 inch paper. And then there's a one inch box so that people can make sure they get the scale correct when they print it out. Now, should I provide a different box of a different size in centimeters? Um, do I need to do anything else? Are you guys accustomed to dealing with files that are intended for eight and a half by 11 inch paper? I'm curious. I am all done with that pattern and everything. Now I'm just figuring out all of the logistics of trying to complete a transaction that has a PDF download with a video link. It's so much more like layers than I realize. You leave the instructions on the PC. Okay, but Rachel, say, see, so like the last, I think four, it's nine pages and the last four pages are the pattern pieces. Okay, a square in centimeters is good. Okay, cool. That's what I was thinking, Melin, because there's room, I'm pretty sure, on all the pages to do that. But if I just do it on one of the pages, that's enough, right? I, I put a one inch square on every page there were pattern pieces just for, you know, I'm new to this, so I wanna make sure I'm like trying to cover all the bases. <laughs> so now if you got a video link, would you want to download the video or would you just stream it and watch it? That's my other question for all of you, for anyone. Five centimeters is a good square size. Okay, cool. Okay, Cheyenne. Cheyenne, are you in the US though? You're in the US, right? Okay, it's enough to do the square on the only first one. That's what I was thinking too, Ida. Maybe I'll put a PDF to A4 format and save it with A4 prefix, okay. Stream the video for sure. Yeah, I would do that too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't download it, but it looks like there's that option. So I was kind of curious, I was like, huh. I like downloading, a like uploading a video with my internet. I have 50 gigs upload and download and it's great. But at home, that would probably take me a little bit, you know. Outside the Netherlands, okay. You'd watch the video, yeah, okay, okay, cool. All right, well, everyone who's already donated and, and like um, supported me in some way, I'm going to be sending it to you directly with the email that you supported me with. So um, hopefully that I'm trying to compile all the emails from all the different places and hopefully I don't miss anybody. So 
Okay, okay, Malin. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I think the hundred percent thing is key, so I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. Print this at one hundred percent scale. Okay. I'm nervous about it, you guys, but I'm so glad I'm doing this first before my other patterns are done because this will be really good practice. And I'm really sorry I'm using you all as guinea pigs, but I'm not sorry at all. <laughs> Hopefully a few people will actually make it so I can see what it's like and they go through the whole process so I can hear like what they thought of the um, experience of my file and my video, you know? <laughs> So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I don't have that, Malin. All the pattern pieces are so small. They all fit inside. That's why this is so fairly straightforward for me to do. Because these, this pattern, like the ones I've done the last year with you guys, like the closet organizer and the notions case, those are all like, I've been just doing it on the side, you know? Um, they're not going to look at all like how my other patterns are coming. Those are going to look really amazing. So, yeah, right, Ida? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and Malin, on the other patterns all have that tiling effect so you know where to join them and stuff. So, But even then, most of the pieces will fit on like two pages, so it won't be too hard. I may try and keep it simple. All right, this is looking good already. Thanks, you guys. I may ask you more questions when I think of them. It's like you don't realize what you need until you start walking through it. So I'm trying to create the product online and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many things I still need to do, <laughs> you know? So look at this, this looks good. I almost did like the, the front one color and then the, the back, the, the, teal, the light teal one, dark one light, but I just, I don't know. Okay, so we've got this, and now we need to do our um, dart on the neckline, and I also need to trim that three quarters of an inch off of the other sleeve, so let me do that so I don't forget, because I almost did actually forget. So, let's see here. I do this in a very scientific way. Do it in a connect the dots kind of way. All right. I wouldn't do it this way if I was on my table. <laughs> All right, that sleeve is ready. So let's do our dart. Okay. Here's the dart. My new dart. I moved the point. Maybe I should surge it. Maybe I will surge it. Oh, I'm so nervous surging a dart. You know? Hi, Mata. How's it going? Oh, that's awesome, Rachel. You do a lot of pattern testing. That's pretty cool. Let's see here. We have our point. Make sure I'm not stretching anything. And then I have to, I'm going to push, I'm actually going to push my neckband seam down. I can hear someone's here. No one should be here. It's Saturday. You've had it seven months. Oh my gosh. Is it because it's a holiday pattern and they're like, wait, wait for the holidays. I just backstitched like a noob, sorry. Usually I hand tie the bottoms of the darts. I don't know why I just did that. I'm gonna trim this up right here. Right, like that. That's what I do, right, right, right. Yep, I line it up and trim off that little tail there. And now we're gonna attach our other sleeve. Then we do our um, pleat, and then we do the burrito. Okay, Put our other sleeve, do the serger. But I just do this one, right? Right, wait. We do 
that sleeve. All right, because we trimmed it three quarters of an inch. Okay. I was just looking at it going, is that going to fit? You know? Okay. I'm kind of nervous about this armhole. I really adjusted it. While this is like a single knit, it really doesn't want to roll. It's kind of nice. Like the neck band kind of did, probably because I cut it along the stripe and I was pulling it a little bit. But it's really easy to work with. It is wool, so um, it does have that wool feeling. All right, so what do I do next? Let's see. Then we do... Oh, yeah, the pleat. Okay, cool. Oh, got it. And now you have to hurry because you finally got it. <laughs> okay, so we have this um, squared off opening here, right here. And we're going to sew this together, right sides, lining up these edges here. like this. Now, um, this is pretty loose top, so I don't really feel worried about not sewing this with a stretch stitch at all. Let's see, this is, I want this going towards the sleeve, okay. I'm gonna try and keep this edge lined up. But, you know, the top edge of that sleeve is curved, so did I do, I did Mata. I did them just so I could sew today, but I'll, I'll explain what I did. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that they work, right? So the, the main thing I did that I think that is really easy for everybody to do that would make the biggest impact if, if they make this and they feel like the dart is like sneaking out from under the pleat like it did it did for me, I just moved that dart point two inches over. And I didn't do it in any like fancy way. <laughs> I uh, straight up, let's see, that's the sleeve. So if you can see my sleeve alterations. I raised the armhole quite significantly and filled it in a little bit there. And then I, <clears throat> is this the front? Here we go. Here's the front. And so on the um, front and the back for the armhole, I scooped it in right here, about an inch, best I could, still leaving this edge the same. And then I lowered, or I brought it in right here and raised up the armhole point. So the armhole point before was like over here. And by raising it up and um, kind of straightening it out right here, <clears throat> I'm hoping that's going to, it's not going to pre prevent all that bunching. I'm getting a tickle. It's not gonna prevent it because honestly, I think part of why it's pulling up and sitting on my bust is the part of the is, is because of the pleat. Like it's a little bit, it's not tight through here, but it's very fitted through here, right? And then you have that pleat, which is pulling in different directions. And so I think that's part of it. And I don't really wanna like, without having a dress form my size or like being able to drape it on me, um, I don't really wanna like go through like deconstructing the whole thing and figuring it out. I think it's, I think it's a great pattern. It's just on me it's doing those things and it probably doesn't do that on everybody. So so the dark point was right here. And so I drew a straight line across. I used the grain line as a guide. Moved the point right there. 
and I literally just redrew the line. The original start line right on this dart leg was right here. I just went over here. So the one thing I'm not sure of if this is going to be negatively affected is now my pleat, you can see right here is narrower through here than up here. And this isn't a right angle right here. So I'm allowing for that to be trimmed right there in my head. So I'm just checking it out. So I did quite a few things. To kind of see, they're totally two different fit issues, but I'm, I'm intrigued enough by this pattern to figure it out. All right, I'm gonna clip this little, I clipped this, right? Oh, that's a good deadline, Rachel. Like, get to go away once you're done. Okay. So now we have our pleat sewn. I think now we do this magic burrito thing here. So. Let's go through this just in case anyone's following along, future people. Um, let's see here. Okay, so. So you have your, I'm just looking this over. You have your point A right here is your dart and point B is your pleat that we just did. And you need to join those two sides together so you're gonna roll this all together. Like this. So that's what they're showing you like this. And now you're gonna join these two legs together. Ooh, mine's kind of thick. So this is where I'm looking at like, okay, because this wasn't at a right angle anymore, is that going to cause any um, weirdness? So, so like I said, you're joining this seam right here to this seam right here, okay? So let's try and get this rolled a little bit lower thickness. Let's pull this down like this. And you straighten out this L line up those two points right there. That's point A, that's point B. Just like that. So let's pin this for now. And let's see how this looks up here. All right. I'm walking it and I'm going to pin it now just so it stays there and I can relax my fingers a little bit. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, so I could probably trim a little bit there. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, see that? I don't really like how it looks like it's already kind of doing that weird pulling though, you know? Maybe straightening, stretching that a little bit. But see, then I get even more. You know what I mean? Like if I just let this relax and go together I and like match up these edges here, I have quite a bit up here sticking up. And, and um, I feel like there is a little bit of torquing happening in the pleat. Like the pleat doesn't want to lay flat, no matter what I do. It makes me feel like I sewed it wrong, you know? See this one here? You see that torquing? Now I, I unpicked this. And um, in the pattern, you put this fold right here of the pleat 
uh, one inch from it, the um, seam. And I flip, flip flopped it. So, so that um, the one inch is at the other side and I felt like that that made it lay better and push the pleat more towards the neck. It did mean that I have to had to ease this seam together right there, but it doesn't really show when I'm wearing it. So I'm just trying to make sure like what happens, let's see. So right now I'm connecting these two seams right here, right, right here. And then it leaves this up here for the shoulder seam. I think we're just gonna have to take a chance. I'm gonna start from the bottom. I'm like, do I start from the bottom? I don't know. I feel a little bit like, do I leave myself um, options or do I, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see, it's an experiment. But it's an experiment with this fabric I really love. Oops, I unthreaded my needle. I mean, the good news is if you're going to do a, a prototype or a muslin of this, it's quick to sew. And you don't have to like add your sleeve cuffs and um, waistband to your, to your muslin if you don't want. All right. So I think it would have been a little easier for me to have the L on the top, but I wanted to sew it from the bottom up. Trying not to stretch it. And I'm just attaching these two seams together. Making sure I don't get any other edges in there. I'm gonna try that. Let's see. Maybe I'll need to force it to match up. I think on my other one, I did um, ease it all together. All right, well, my dart is definitely towards You know, the funny thing is the dart is the seam, the seam I just sewed. Like I just now attached that to the dart and it's kind of crazy that the dart sneaks out into the middle of the garment. This looks pretty good. Kind of want to try it on. What do you guys think? Is it looking better this time? It's kind of hard to tell, I know. Can you guys tell? <laughs> hey, Lisa. I love these fabrics. Let me, um, let me look at myself in the camera. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna lose the chat for a second. Can I make this bigger? No. Okay. Oh, that's already looking a lot better to me. It's really weird looking at yourself. It's not a mirror. Look, I'm looking at myself right side. Okay, so. I can't 
can't get that to not look torqued right there. It's really hard looking at yourself in a camera. It's not a mirror, like you're used to your hands. Like looking at yourself the way you're actually looking to the world is really weird. I don't know if you know what I mean by that. There's a really great radio lab on it. I don't know. Okay, what about... Okay. Let me see what you guys are saying, if you're saying anything. Yeah, it still seems so fiddly, right? <laughs> My pet snake. I'm gonna put some eyeballs on it, Mata. <laughs> yeah, like... Maybe this fabric is a little too thick for something like this. And you know, remember you guys, like I moved this point deeper in there because I didn't like it showing. So that probably changed the way it wants to sit. All right, let's read the directions and see what we're supposed to do and see if we want to do that. If you made it a snake, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now um, I'm supposed to center this, not center it, don't center it. That's not what you're supposed to do. Look how torquey it seems. So this is what I'm talking about with this one inch business. So when you fold this up, so maybe I should, what if I make it so that this is lined like in that seam? Let's just try it. I, I really don't have anything to lose. Um, you know what I mean? So like I have all this sitting here. So let's see what it looks like when I sew it to fit. So I'm gonna have to take this seam out, which is a little dicey since I'm on the sweater knit stuff, but um, I think it'll be worth trying it. So it is, it is an experiment, this, this one, right? I'd really like it to work out too. Uh-oh. <laughs> I was just telling my husband, you guys, that, um, or was I telling my husband this? Yeah, I think I was. Um, it's really interesting, like, in, on, um, like, the, this, like, in my stream, you guys all have your, seemingly it looks like your real first and last names, right? You know, you don't have, like, you're not using, like, a username. Um, and I would do the same thing. Um, and you know, that, and so, um, but it's funny, like in the gaming world, you, you never see that. You always see like an alternate name, you know, it usually doesn't look like a real name, you know, like, like mine is Phoenix, you know, and it's so interesting how <laughs> inherently people in the gaming world just know that that's what you're supposed to do. Like I didn't when I first started gaming and I used my first name because I knew no one who would have taken my first name. It was easy. I use it and I use it for everything. I've always used my name as my login because it's usually not taken and it's easy, right? Um, and then eventually I was like, oh, okay, this isn't a good idea because people can find me out in the world and I don't really want them to bug me. Um, but I don't know why we want to hide it. Like if we all were giving our first and last names, maybe we would be better behaved in that world, you know? I'm, be I'm, I'm well behaved, I promise, but still. <laughs> <laughs> so now Eliza's husband's googling the lens gonna send off a fiery email to her <laughs> okay so let's see what happens you guys all took notes of what it looked like a second ago right when I made this the first time it all matched it's just because I've probably altered the um, dart leg a little bit I didn't alter it like it shouldn't have been that much different but um 
Partly it's probably because, you know, like one of the seams is a little bit stretched from being sewn. So let's just do this as an experiment. Like to me, it looks like we would be torquing it if we match up these two edges, you know? But um, maybe it solves it. Let's get rid of all these threads here. Okay, so it's these two edges here. Right, Ida? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Malin made me, oh no, Malin. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, they, they really are, Ida, some of them. And you know, honestly, it was just like the young like people. I was just like, I don't really want you looking me up. I'm not hard to find. I think Melinda's making all good suggestions, so she's got your back. <laughs> okay. So this goes here. I'm gonna maybe allow myself a little bit less. Oof, I just feel like this is gonna torque. But you never know. I'll start from the L side this time. Did Malin tell you about those, Rachel, too? I don't remember. I remember us talking about those, though. Okay. So this isn't hard to ease this. If only Malin was making a commission on all these pattern purchases. You know? <laughs> I knew that, Mata. I actually saw in your, I think your email, and I was like, oh, it's so fun to see some of your guys' names. I don't tell anybody, but I also can't remember or keep track, so. <laughs> right, Jan? I know, exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's so smart, Eliza. Oh. Frisky knickers. That's cute. Yeah, okay, Rachel. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that, I thought that recommendation had come from you. All right, let's see how it looks now. Wait, how come I didn't have to? Oh, I didn't do that on the inside. Shoot. <laughs> All right, well, this is a good way to test it. So I just did that so that it's raw, like exposed. I mean, you're supposed to do it on the inside. So. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, is that a name date? What does that mean? That sounds cool. All right, let's see. Yeah, I've definitely been like cutting things from other fabrics, you know? All right, I'm gonna do that thing again. I'm gonna look up, look at myself big. Maybe this fabric's a little too thick. I think that this gets one, this, this is how the pattern instructions would be. It'd be something like this. That actually works pretty good. I feel like I'm wearing a, a Girl Scout sash. For those of you outside the States, I'm sure you can relate to that, to something. You know, like I need little badges on it, <laughs> you know. Um, the only thing is I didn't insert that inside the seam. I'm wondering if that makes a difference. So that's a good experiment too. That actually looked a lot better. So, <clears throat> I 
Maybe I should just fix it and sew it right right now. Every day in the Swedish calendar has a name or two. Wow. Badge it up. <laughs> I know, I do have a few badges. <laughs> um, all right, so let me take this out though and sew it so that it's enclosed because that's just nice and it doesn't take long. Oh, um, that reminds me because I'm like, okay, what can I talk to you guys about while I take this out? I'm so sorry, I forgot to tell you, I don't think I did, that it was Itch to Stitch's um, five year anniversary um, this week and she had like 20% off on her patterns. Um, so I shared it in my story. So that's the Mountain View pull on jeans and she makes all kinds of other patterns. I like her patterns a lot. They, they're, they're, um, they're classic designs and some of them have some interesting details on them, you know? Um, but the other thing is Spoonflower, which is the custom fabric design place. Um, you don't have to design your fabric, you can buy. There's plenty of choices. They are having 25% off on the organic cotton knit, which is a really nice fabric. So yeah, right, Beverly? Maybe I should have done the stripes on the front. Oh yeah, Rachel, that stuff takes up a lot of space. So um, anyway, if anyone is looking to buy knit fabric and you're looking for the biggest selection of prints you can find in one place, I totally recommend going to Spoonflower because 25% off is a heck of a deal. And you might check in, outside the US to see if the um, German-based one has the same I'm pretty sure they do the same sale going on and there's no code necessary and it's good through um, midnight tomorrow, but I'm not sure what time zone that is. So anyway, I think I'm going to try and take advantage of it. I, what I really want to make is a pair, a set of pajamas and I want to do a knitwear top, but woven bottoms like in, and, um, but the same print for both. And you can do that in Spoonflower, right? So I can have the exact same print for the bottoms as the top, but in printed on different fabric bases, which is so awesome. So I really want to do that. And I'll do it for the stream. So now that they have the sale, I'm like, okay, great. Now I'll just go and do it. That more than pays for shipping. I actually think I have free shipping because I'm still a pro member. So I should definitely take advantage of it before the end of the year. Cause I don't know if I'll renew next time. All right, let's do this. Let's do this right. I can't believe I forgot to do that. It, it felt really easy, but not that hard either. Okay, so this is how I do it. Lay it down like this, like this, this down. Now watch when I sew it this way. This is when it does its um, weird thing. Maybe this will make it torque. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna start. This is why I ended up starting from the bottom because um, I wanna start from this side with the L. I'll just do it this way. It was about right there. <laughs> Ooh, I see you, okay. Tia Knight Fabrics. Uh oh. What kind of fleece do you mean like, um, like the polar fleece, polyester fleece, or do you mean the kind like, um, Sweatshirt fleece like cotton, cotton poly. It brushed. I'm gonna have to go with my husband on one of his many trips to Germany one of these times to meet you guys. Okay, where's my, here's my dart. This probably looks really confusing to you guys, but it's actually pretty. 
and easy. Oh, let's get rid of this thread. I feel like this is going to show so much dog fur. All right. Just easing that together. And making sure you get all this in there. Oh, pull up and cut please. Okay, cool. Yeah, I would love to. I haven't been for a while. I'd love to sew with you guys. It would be so fun. Where could I where could I go and meet like all of you? <laughs> like how many places do I what kind of tour are we talking about here? He goes to um Friedrichshafen, um Berlin, um you went to college in Heidelberg. <laughs> I love the history, Eliza. That's so fascinating. Now, I'm going to look up name days now. Okay. Um, where am I at? Let's see here. So let's see. It looks like even though I just flipped it around, it looks like it's still going to behave. So that's good. I think. See, so before I unpicked it on the red one and I moved this one inch overlap to like this. I did it like this. That's how I got it to lay flat. But this time now, it looks like I'm gonna be able to follow the directions like that. Northern Germany. Yeah, Do you have you been to Heidelberg, Vicky? It's cute. You come for the sewing, stay for the chat. <laughs> it's a social experience, right? Like, how many times have you guys actually been making what I'm making? It's not a sew along, right? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to make people understand. Like, hey, you can meet people, talk about sewing, or other things. Chats are really great. Munich or Berlin. And for Lent, for Milan, Hamburg, Oslo, okay. Yeah, I totally, yeah, social, exactly. Yeah, that would be really awesome. We need to find a, a, like a place that could host us, like a fabric store or something. That won't think we're, you know, crazy. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do the last um, underarm seam there, and that's when we're gonna, or I mean, I'm sorry, not underarm, armhole. Let's see. Could I, this is the inside. That doesn't look like a, it looks like a hole on this side, but it's just where that little L is. I could have probably gotten a little closer. I'm gonna not keep sewing that spot though. All right, so let's see. We're gonna put our armhole together here. And then we're gonna do our underarms, sleeve cuffs, and hem. I don't know what I'm doing for the hem quite yet. We'll, we'll discuss that. Okay, so. They want you to leave about an inch right here. Let's see, I think I want that. Do I, does it want to go on the inside? Yeah, I think so. I'm just trying to decide which way to push the seam allowance here. <clears throat> so my suspicion of it um, not being a right angle right here was correct. So that's the good news. I can um, square this off on my pattern piece now. I really, really, really want to sew this inside like this, but I can't. All right, so um, I did find it, remember before, I found it a little tricky to get this nice and lined up right here. 
So I am going to sew that on my um, single needle machine here first. To get it like that. And then I'm gonna put it in my serger. All right. So let's see. That sounds good. I'm well. I'm not much of a skier, Mata. I'm not saying Californians don't ski, but you know, I don't surf either. <laughs> but hot cocoa by a cozy fire. Now you're talking my language. Yeah, exactly, Eliza. <laughs> Me and Eliza will will keep the fires going for you guys. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm getting to all this little stuff here and my little seam that I pre-sewed. I'm gonna try and keep my neckband seam pointed down. Let's see if it'll do it. Oops. No, don't do that. So I hand sewed this on my other one and I and I liked I liked the way that turned out right here. I didn't do as good a job the second time because I was kind of getting to that eager point. Yeah, right. Hi Nicolene, how's it going? Oh, I know, right? I, you know, those notifications, though, sometimes they can really, like, bog your phone down, you know? So if you click the, I think on YouTube, it's a bell. And if you click it, it will notify you. Um, I had to turn off most of mine because I follow so many streamers that my battery was going low because it was always checking for notifications. So there's that. <laughs> All right, so we have our, I've been making the bowline sweater today, Nicolene, and this is my second one this week. Um, it's a really interesting pleat detail here. I'm definitely gonna hand sew this. Uh, I would love to bind it, honestly. See, it looks really bad when it's sitting here on the table, but honestly, you know, that's not how it is on the body. It actually was really comfortable, you guys. I know you guys mentioned that someone said, a few people in review said that they didn't like this little point, but I don't feel it at all. So, <laughs> drinking, sewing, and watching people ski, not necessarily an over. Yeah. <laughs> Malta. <laughs> that's hilarious. Right, Nicolene? I know, totally. Yeah. I thought I would remember exactly. <laughs> oh my God, really, Rachel? Wow. Yeah, your dog was not having it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I feel like this is like a adventurous beginner project, you know? Like if you've sewn a little bit with knits, um, I think you could do it, you know? It's that, that burrito folding method isn't as confusing as it seems. I feel like today I, I like did it much easier because I was like, okay, you know, we've done this before. And basically that spot is sewing the dart right here and the little L cut out here to each other and getting them right sides together so it's nice and clean finished on the inside, which I didn't do once today. <laughs> 
He's 16 has an attitude. You know, my I had the best behaved dog. Such a gem. He was amazing. And when he became really elderly, he, for the first time in his life, would just pick food off of our plate if it was sitting on like a low table, like a coffee table at the TV or something. Um, and he'd never done that before, ever. He would have just like maybe looked at it from the side of his eye, but he wouldn't even like, he would never do that. And I just thought, okay, if you're that hungry, go for it. Because he was just, you know, bones at that point. But I, I was kind of astounded. I was like, wow, you cheeky bugger. I'm surprised. <laughs> All right, so now we have our underarm seams. And um, so that's the, that little hole. It's kind of a little annoying, isn't it? I kind of want to fix it, but what would it take? Oh, it's too late now. I just closed the hole. All right, I'm dealing with it. Um, all right, so we're going to do our underarm here. I'm going to start from the bottom. So remember that I barely had enough of this particular fabric for this because the pleat details um, was so extended above the shoulder seam that it went past my fabric that I bought because I didn't buy this fabric intended for this design. You know. So what I did was I just straightened it across the front and um, left it like that. Um, and then like, cause the pattern is curved like this at the waist and the front, but not in the back, interestingly enough. So what I did was I just straightened that line out, um, and made it as long as possible. And, and I think it's going to be fine because I had the red one for reference, um, without the waistband, I feel like it's going to be plenty long and I'm not putting a waistband on this one cause I kind of want to see it just hanging loose cause this is a little th thicker fabric. So yeah, he's ne doing things he's never done before. 16 is such a great age. Mine was 17. <laughs> Ricky's like, oh shoot, I gotta get the dogs. All right, here's I'm gonna search my underarms here, and then we have our um, sleeves here as well, our cuffs. Okay, why is that so different right there? Might be because I was monkeying around with the armhole, but I checked that. It's probably because I um, had to change the length because this is the back. Yeah, that's what it is. So we're gonna, I'm actually gonna go from the sleeve down. I don't usually like doing that. I like going from the bottom up so I can press the seam allowances towards the, um, the armhole seam allowances towards the sleeve. But because I adjusted the length on the fly as I was cutting it out, there's some, you know, unforeseen things I'm dealing with here. So I'm gonna line up these seams here, but I'm going to split the difference. I'm gonna put one towards the body and one towards the sleeve. Just to reduce the bulk and also to get them firmly seated one with one another and then hopefully they'll match up perfectly. not going to pull this to stretch and match it. I'm just going to see where it sits on me before I decide. So. I don't want it to be that much shorter though. Because remember, my front pattern piece went like this. That's how the pattern piece goes. And so because I straightened it off, I lost a little bit at the side seams. And then I dropped the back a little bit just because I was kind of hoping I could get that kind of like up in the front and down in the back kind of swooping curve. You guys know what I mean by that? So we'll see. I didn't want to trim anything until it was all sewn, just so I could see where things were at. Oh, I should be matching my stripes. What the heck am I thinking? What in the heck am I thinking right now? They should match, but, uh, you know. 
<laughs> I need to help him along. At least it's the underarm scene. See, now when I put the flannel under the machine to help the noise, which I don't think it's helping at all, my machine's moving all over the place. I did not do a good job at matching my stripes. Shame on me. Kind of lifting up my garment so it's not pulling on the needle. Breaking a needle on your straight stitch machine isn't as, well, it's not great. It's not great for your machine, but it's not great for your serger for sure. Bye, Ida. Good night. Sleep well. Hope I didn't miss you. Now we're going to put on our cuffs. I just matched them to the sleeve. our cuffs together makes it a little easier let's fold our cuffs out now I match my stripes that looks pretty good fold the raw edges together I love this stripe. This came in a few colors. It's really cute. I got this at Stone Mountain and Daughter in Berkeley. Thanks to the generosity of one of you guys and gals. Just lining up my um, seam, pushing the seam the right way. All right. Yeah, I probably should have done the thumb hole thing, huh? I know one of you's gonna say it. <laughs> I don't typically use thumb holes except on my running clothes, so I don't think about it. There you go, the raw edges together. I always like to start before these thick seams. Get it going before I have to go over it. Just make sure you don't lose one of your three edges, otherwise your cuff won't get caught in. I feel like that's a common mistake I used to make, whereas this middle one would like drop down in there and then it wouldn't be lined up. And then, you know, a week after finishing, I'd be wearing it and I'd notice <laughs> there was a, a hole in my cuff on the outside of the garment, not the inside. Just keep your raw edges lined up. This doesn't have to stretch much, so it's not too hard. And remember, if you're a beginner on this kind of thing, just keep the sewing it from the inside of the cuff makes it a lot easier. 
Same with hems. One more cuff. What should I do for the hem? I need to figure out what I'm going to do with my hem. Where's my mouse? There we go. Oh, it's it's so true, Nicolene. Everything when it's new, it's like a new, you're learning a new language. You're learning um, how to put something together that's three dimensional. You're learning how to operate your machine. Um, yeah, just hang in there. <laughs> look at things in your closet that look like the garment you're making. I found that to be so useful when I was a beginner. If it was a project I'd never made before, I would look for something in my closet that had that kind of detail and really look at it to make sure it actually is the same detail. I didn't match my stripes there very well. I'm just making sure I have the same stripes on my cuffs facing out. So this is the right side of my cuff. Aw, oh, Rachel. Yeah, you need a break. <laughs> you know? Don't watch a scary movie. <laughs> I can remember it, but I do feel like um, like this being here in the stream has taught me so much about like what it was um, that I forgot that I thought about when I was a beginner. And I really love um, hearing what you guys are frustrated with because I'm like, oh, OK, yeah, I do kind of remember that. It kind of jogs my memory. But I'm a beginner at other things, you know. So yeah, do they have any tutorials for your pet? What are you making? Yeah, and if you know what basting is, you can kind of sew it together with a long stitch. Don't back stitch at the beginning and the end and kind of temporarily put it together. Or if you use the clover clips, you can clip it together and then turn it to, to the right way to see if that looks correct. You can pin it. Um, I used to go as far as making a paper version and sewing the paper together. Or state with my stapler if I was at the pattern table. I definitely remember some of the light bulb mo moments that I had as a new sewer or the, the moments I had where things changed and got better. Like my way of thinking changed in that moment to make me better. And I think like the biggest thing I, I really taught myself was that I was the boss <laughs> and I making this thing do what I want it to do. And I wasn't going to take no for an answer really upped my, my sewing skill, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. The whole inside out, upside down thing. Um, it's, it is, it is really hard to, um, think inside out for, for a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, wrap top from Peppermint. Um, I really want to get that magazine. Is that only print version? Because that's based in Australia or New Zealand, correct? The wrap top, does the wrap top have a hood by any chance? Because one of the viewers is looking for <laughs> a hooded wrap top. All right, you guys, what is this? What is this right here? Is this just a thread? What is that monkey business? Goosebumps too, huh? That guy is legendary. It was, I think it was just his birthday. Or was it the birthday of his books? I don't know. No hood, oh, okay. All right, you guys.
I love these fabrics. If this top doesn't work out, I'm buying these fabrics again. <laughs> All right, so um, I need to decide what to do for my hem. But I kind of want to try it on first to see if how the length is. Yeah, it might be. I know people really like it, that magazine. I'm going to sew this while I think about what to do for my hem. Um, I, pro I wonder if I could piece together enough fabric for maybe a narrower band. I don't really want to piece it together though, you know. Oh, cool. You haven't tried them yet? What do they specialize in? Is it just basically a sewing magazine for everybody? I feel like they're really good about doing inclusive sizing. I am so confident I'm hand sewing this. <laughs> I had to take it out last time. <laughs> Eliza, this is, um, it's two sided too. So you can use either side. This is a really deep teal, but almost, almost like a deep, 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 deep forest green. So this is, um, two-sided fabric and they had other colorways as, as well um, and it's from Stone Mountain and Daughter in Berkeley, California and it's called I'm pretty sure Italian wool. I bought it this summer. I don't know if it's still there. I imagine they still have some. What would you make out of it Eliza? Why are you gasping Lisa? <laughs> okay. These little like edges of this um wool here. Okay, this is my this is my little thread tail from when I tacked it. I should have gotten rid of that. Should have maybe taken it out. I'm gonna try and smooth this down a little bit. Hand sign. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I, I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. I was giving you a chance to not be shocked I was hand sewing. I don't like these little things. <laughs> things. Yeah, see, that's what I... Um... <laughs> I, I thought it is only a paper magazine, exactly. You can get the, the patterns without having a, a subscription, Nicolene. Because maybe I could just subscribe and then they don't have to send it to me. Hi, Pam. Um, I use a, a Juki 8700-7. I can tell you about it if you want to learn more about it. And then my um, serger is a Baby Lock Evolve. This one's brand new. The serger is definitely not brand new. I'm going to trim these. I can't get these to go away. Here, I'm going to pull it actually first. I love sewing on an industrial. Oh, okay, cool. That's cool. I'm going to check them out. I, I was checking them out once and then... I don't know why I was, I was on there for a specific reason and I remember, I remember telling myself, you need to come back to the patterns. That's really cool. Okay. They're quite popular. It that I feel like um, it's one of those things where I see people make their things and they, no offense, they look better on the people who make them than what they, they display it. You know, as because when I was I follow them on Instagram and I'm like, huh, I'm not sure about about that pattern. And then I'll see people make it and I'm like, oh, that's really cute. You know, I didn't do a good job of getting this lined up. 
I feel like I could do better. The, there's, this does look really nice, but I feel like this is like a little high right here. I really need to up my hand sewing skills, you guys. I'm going to try and do this. I'm always experimenting, you know? All for the cause. This is working. I'm like, it's like I'm understitching it. It's working though, really well. Go figure. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> you mean you use five colors of thread? Oh, th color buttons. Oh, that's that sounds cute though. Yeah, it does sound good. I did that once for a sweater I knit um, because I I had this amazing. Um, Oh my gosh, I'm totally spacing on yarn with bunny fur in it. Angora. It was an Angora something. A amazing fabric uh, uh, yarn by this really small farm. Um, every year I would see the, them at a show, a little husband and wife, and I would buy like one skein. It was kind of pricey. <laughs> and I made my husband some gloves. And that the yarn blooms, meaning it gets like kind of like super fuzzy over time, you know, it was just really fun. And then I decided, you know what, I, I'm pretty intentional about my knitting. So I was like, you know what, I want a sweater out of this, not really realizing what I was getting myself into. And so I was like, I'm going to get, I've already bought a couple of skeins over the years. I'm just going to buy three more and then I'll, be, I'll have enough sweater quantity. And then I got the wrong gauge. <laughs> then they weren't there the next year. And then the next year I saw them, I was like, there they are. I'm just going to buy a sweater quantity, a huge investment. I got it. So I have all this amazing, it's so soft. And when you, when you knit, when it's before it's knit, it's like pretty smooth. Um, it, it definitely has that like, um, farm looking quality, which I love. Like it looks very authentic. <laughs> and, um, is, and so I, Finally got around to knitting the sweater and I what I ended up doing was because it was such a lightweight yarn I held it with another strand of fingering weight yarn, which is like a sock weight and I used all of my scrap sock weight yarn with the Angora which was one color it was like this like grayish brown color it turned out really cute um, but the sweater keeps getting fuzzier and fuzzier you know <laughs> like I'm starting to look rabbitish um, which I didn't really realize would happen. My friend Brooke was probably just like, oh my God. <laughs> like she watched this whole thing happen. You know, Brooke that comes here to the stream. But she doesn't, you know, she doesn't chime in. Because <laughs> she just lets me do what I want to do, you know. But um, because all of those different sock weight yarns and different colors were kind of going through that unifying thing. I used different buttons and every button color matched like kind of the area. It turned out cute, but I don't wear it. It's very warm, so... <laughs> oh, that sounds fun, Nicolene. Bed sheets are great for cutting your sewing teeth on, you know? <laughs> the navy flannel with retro Avenger symbols. That's kind of, that's kind of fun. <laughs> it does. Yeah. What's Marlin? You test for a few Marlin, but this month is one company. Maybe that's just talking about. You, you, you test for a few people. Okay. Um, I'm just going to try this on over my shirt to see what the length is like so I can see what to do about the hem. It's not going to fit the same. I did test, uh, that sweatshirt over my collared shirt the other day. Under, over the right shirt, it would be fine. It's not ideal, so. Over my shirt is a little tight. Oh, it might be a little too tight for the pleat. Oh, well, oh, okay. 
You've seen that one before, right? Minus smarmy. Darn autocorrect, exactly. Okay, this one I won't be able to wear over a shirt. All right, I'm gonna look at myself in the non-reflection again, which is really hard, but I'm gonna try. All right, it's, it seems already less fussy. It looks like a Girl Scout badge. <laughs> I think it'll be better not over my um, shirt, for sure. I'm not getting the bunching here, which is great. <laughs> I think I'll just um, trim this. Maybe I'll do a facing. I'm looking forward to trying this um, on without the shirt. Yeah, Eliza, it is because of my shirt. Ugh. I'm wearing an archer button up and the armholes are kind of dropped in the archer button up. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Malin. I think steaming it would be good. And I love the colors of it, I know. Maybe I would do some artful hand sewing on the pleat to um, do something. I do think like all in all, this is laying better than the other one. If this were in a drapier fabric, I think it would show it off better, you know? All right, so what should I do for my Facing. I wonder if I have enough of the stripe. What if I did a striped facing? Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda taper this. Like this. I keep snagging that on my needle. Um, I did Nicoline on Instagram in fact, I did a few posts about it. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram or if you're on Instagram yourself. But um, so on Thursday, right afterward, I do something called Home So Catwalk where I where I do a couple pictures and then I do a little video so you can see what it does when I'm moving around. You know? And the, um, it, it, I got a lot of really positive comments, but it definitely was like, okay, this is feeling funny. Like it, I kept doing this and it kept like sitting up here. Yeah, right, Rachel? I think I'm embellishing it, exactly. So, um, so then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna attack this. And I just did it off camera because I was already done with the stream that day. So I moved the, the dart point two inches this way on this one. And I raised my armholes on this one. But on that one, I um, moved the pleat fold right here. And I made like it's one inch here and, and I made the one inch on this side instead. So it canted it like more pleat going this way towards the neck like that. And it helped. It's less fussy. That fabric's amazing, that merino. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, okay, what did I just do to my... I don't understand how my needle, my thread can even do that right there. Come on, okay. Let me look, um, let me see where my, oh, you know where I put this right? Let me see if I have enough for a facing. I put it in my sock bin. I think, So I would have had plenty of this because, but remember you guys, I had already cut the sleeves out. Hi, Raquel. Um, I had already cut the sleeves out and then when I made the pattern modification, I had to recut my sleeves out. So that used up some of my fabric. But let's see. 
I feel like I have enough here that I can maybe piece together a facing on the inside hem. Not ideal, I know, but still. I'm looking for a really narrow fold over elastic that's kind of firm, you guys. Do you think? I haven't checked any of the bra making places yet. All right, so we're going to do a quick and dirty facing on the hem. Let me get my rotary mat right here. I think it's right here. And let me get a knife. This isn't my usual pattern table. <laughs> I'm going to put it on the fold like this so then I have a symmetrical curve. So I straightened the front waist because of the fabric, limit of fabric I had. This fabric looks even better in person, you guys. It's so cute. I love it. So I'm gonna kinda do a hem sort of like that high neck sweatshirt we just made, you know? Do I have a big enough piece right here for the front? Ooh. I know, isn't it great, Raquel? Ooh, so close. I can make this work. I don't want much. Yeah, okay, so we'll just make it Yeah, I, I love this fabric. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim this off here, like that. Okay, we have a front facing. Now we need a back facing. And it's curved. That actually might help us out that it's curved. I'm gonna line up the seam allowance here so I know I've got it on the fold over here. Can you see all that? You would lengthen with the stripes. I don't think I have enough. I'm not sure I have enough because I would need enough to fold and extend, you know? Fabric chicken. It's my favorite kind of chicken. Um, not really. <laughs> Okay, I may need to do it in two pieces. Because, you know, stripes are gonna go like that. Yes, okay. So what we need is a piece this size as well. And we'll just put a center back seam. Yeah, I think that's it, <laughs> Eliza. Um, if you want to, like, yeah, is it, what colors does it come in? Yeah, me too, Beverly. I kind of wish, I could put the facing on the right side, you know? Okay, what am I doing here? This is my piece, right? I need to do it right sides or like like uh, opposite. Let's see, which way? My purple, purple, blue, orange. Purple, blue, orange, right? Try and line up my stripes. Am I really gonna do that? Do I have to? 
This is the same direction, right? Yeah, okay. These are one-way stripes. So have you guys ever talked about like one or thought about one-way versus two-way stripes? This is a really good example of a one-way stripe, which means that I can't sew this piece to this piece. Like here, let me show you on another piece here. Um, so these stripes, they go like this, right? You see how those match up? You can't sew it like this because then they don't match up. There's no way you can get it to, to match up. It's a one-way stripe. If it were a two-way stripe, you could sew it this way or this way and it would match. So, Berry, aqua, and denim. I remember there was a berry. Um, the finish length is good, Beverly. I'm not adding a waist band because I don't have enough fabric. <laughs> So I'm gonna face it with the stripe. And so it's not gonna come in on the bottom like the other one, you know? Yeah, I like the, I know, I love this, I love this fabric. Okay, so let's see, I have this here, here, there. I'm just stacking up my stripes right now. I'm going to have to put a center back seam. Let's see if I can even match my stripes with the side seam. There are cupcakes everywhere, you guys. <laughs> Let's not cut our um, sweatshirt either. Try and stack these best I can. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I may not even be able to match the stripes with the side seam, but we'll try. We'll try. So this one goes like this. No, like this, right? Yeah, so this is my side seam right there. Let's see if I can do it. This is my back. And I want to line up this edge with this stripe right here. Oh, I think I can got I think I can do that. It's gonna look like I planned this. All right. Got nothing else under there. I have two layers throughout. I think I'm good. I don't want to make any mistakes because I don't have much fabric to um, play around with. Let's get our shape here. I'm right on the edge there. I'm going to get a seam allowance there. Right there. And then I'm going to do my side seam right here. My length consistent. All right, let's move all this out of the way. The things we do around here. All right, let's sew these together so I don't forget that this is the center back. You should, I mean, do you mean because it's sharp? You should always change your blade. I can lecture about that if you want the um, excuse to change your blade. If you want, just let me know. It's good for your hands. Let's throw these side seams together. Those don't look like they match very good, though. 
I picked the wrong, what the heck? This doesn't go. Okay, well I didn't do that great on this one, this side. Probably the other side. This is why when you sew things with stripes to match, you shouldn't ever do it on the full fold or two layers. Do as I say, not as I do. This side matches, see? And the other side didn't. You can tell this fabric, I don't know if you can see this. Why is my, everything so orange all of a sudden? Um, see how it's brushed here, but it's not here? Can you see that? The stitch definition is clear right here, and there's a line right here, and this has been brushed. So this is getting into the selvage. I remember I barely made it. Nice clean cut. Yeah, I know. It is satisfying, right? I love that. I think it also helps because I usually cut everything out on a um, rotary mat, but it's not, a, not an Ulfa, which is... Um, actually self-healing <laughs> you know um, whereas my other one it's self-healing but it's not quite on the on that level but it's big like I have one on the table behind me and I have one on the pattern table and um, it is definitely nice when you use that your blade will feel sharper okay so let me not get lost here this is the center back right and that is the front circles so like this. All right, so what's my plan? I think I'm gonna serge this together. And then um, like I should, I can overlock this top edge and top stitch it down. Or I could cover stitch it, but I don't know if I want to cover stitch. Oh, right, Nicolene. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. That's how I do it too, Beverly. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would rec. I don't know if you have like a store like a Joanne Fabrics, Nicolene, and you get their like 50% off coupons, but just download their app on their phone. I download their app in the parking lot. <laughs> I haven't been there for a couple years, but um, that's what I do. I download the app in the parking lot and then use the coupon. Sometimes they have one there at the checkout, you know, and then that's what I use those coupons for is blades, mats, things like that. Just buying that little mat for right here was kind of a splurge. It's funny what we splurge on. There's always things to buy. Okay, so now we have our facing, which I'm gonna serge on. It's gonna give it a little more structure and, um, but it still gives that stretch. I forgot my label. Oh, okay, okay. There is someone here from Switzerland. Who's from Switzerland? Who is that? Definitely gonna have to come to Europe. All right, I'm going to Just clip it a little bit here and there. I pieced him. You think so, Rachel? I haven't noticed a difference. Um, but I do think like the ones I'm using right now, I keep thinking, oh, it's gotta be time to change the blade and I haven't been I haven't had to. I've definitely always stick to Ulfa brand blades. I have learned like buying the non-brand ones, they don't last. And sometimes they feel they feel nicked out of the package. And I only bought them once by accident and I bought a bunch and we had to suffer through them. I finally just threw them away. I was like, nope, I'm not suffering through this. Okay, I'm gonna serge this on. And then I'm gonna probably serge the edge as well. Um, I have a Ulfa, but um, people have Fiskars and Ulfa and um, 
I think if you just find one you like, like nowadays, mine's old. <laughs> mine's old. Uh, you don't see them like this anymore. Usually they have a squeezing handle to make them more safe. And also they have so-called ergonomic ones, but they're, it's not going to change much. So um, I think like if you're only going to buy one, I would buy this size, the 45 millimeter. That's the, oh, I'm showing you on the wrong camera. So the 45 millimeter right here. Um, and eventually you might want one that's smaller, but I don't think it's necessary. I like having the smaller one for small curves, but a lot of people have never even heard of using a small one. So, and, and if you're gonna do really thick, thick stuff, maybe a 60 millimeter, but I think that's overkill personally. I think the 45 millimeter is all you ever need. You can use that for forever. I've literally had that for like 20 years <laughs> since they came out. The same one. <laughs> I have two because I have one that has a, um, a pinking blade, which is like the little zigzag blade. And I got that with one of those coupons. That was a splurge because that blade's expensive. And I've been using the same pinking blade since I bought it. <laughs> I do not use the pinking blade to cut things out. I only use it as a novelty for um, like when I would make swatches for to show for, the, for a business I used to have. So, oh, okay, Lisa. So the 60 millimeter is great for quilting. Yeah, get one that's comfortable for your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Most likely you won't be able to try it in the package. I saw Ulfa has all these really great colors now. I'm like, wow, they don't even have this yellow. <laughs> you used to only be able to get that yellow and that was it. But I think a 45 millimeter is perfect. I would definitely go with a big brand so that's easy to find the blades. Oh, really great, Vicky, really? Yeah, so, um, the 60 would also be kind of hard to cut uh, interior angles, not the like exterior angle, but the, if your square was on the inside of the fabric, kind of like that pleat at the bottom of that pleat. Rotary knives in general are hard to cut those, but you don't come across those as often as you think. Do you like the cutting out process, Nicolene? I do feel like getting a rotary knife makes the cutting out process more pleasurable and fast. Okay, so is my facing. I'm gonna surge this edge now. I would have done it before, but um, uh, I don't really have a really good reason. It doesn't matter. It's, it'd be better to do it before so you don't accidentally cut your garment, but at the same time, doing these, I didn't want it to get stretched out, you know? So, yeah, so, yeah. That's true, Terry. You could totally do that. You can rehydrate a self-healing mat? Yeah. Ulfa, I'm pretty sure, came out with rotary knives. That's probably why they have such a strong brand recognition with them. Yeah, so I always say, Nicolene, when people ask me what my favorite tool is, I always say my table. The day you can get off the ground is so great, you know, for your body, your morale, <laughs> your speed of doing things. It makes a big difference. Right, I'm just kind of surging this edge, trying not to knock my scissors on the ground. 
opening up all these little seams. Wishing I would have mashed my stripes better. <laughs> that's all that's happening right now. So Eliza, are you gonna get some of the wool? What are you thinking? I may, I should have probably tightened up my serging stitch. Oh, it looks okay. It's just, I got a little close on the edge right there. I'm trying not to trim any off. Yeah, table and rotary cutter. So don't iron on your rotary mat. I I do that. I've done that. I used to actually have a friend. How did she do it? She had she would iron on top of her her um her mat, like the one I have on the table behind me. Um I can't remember if she put a press cloth under it. And her mat would do this, you know, like it would raise up from the heat and then it would always go back down. But the Ulfa self-healing mats don't do that. They they don't go back. And um, I learned that the hard way because someday if you're here and I'm ironing, you'll see I iron on a wool felt pad that I just set on a shelf right here. I don't use an ironing board. And it's just a whole reason why I didn't do that. I love ironing boards. I use one at home. But I used to slip that Ulfa mat under the felt thing just as a space saving thing so I could grab it really easily. And I didn't know it was slowly warping it. So I have two of those. One's a little wavy. It's the one I would like probably bring with me sewing somewhere just in case I accidentally forget it there, you know, so. All right, so we have our facing here. Just gonna trim this thread here. If you notice my scissors are not trimming as well lately. Very annoying. Um, I'm deciding, I'm trying to decide if I wanna understitch. So I'm just gonna under, maybe understitch it and then top stitch it down. Just like we did on that high neck sweatshirt. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not good for, I can show you mine. It's, I, I don't wanna throw it away because I feel like it'd be good also for like a work surface that you may ruin by accident for some reason or another. All right, I'm gonna understitch this, which means I'm pushing the seam allowance towards the facing right here. Here's the seam allowance. I'm pushing it that way and I'm stitching it down and that's gonna help keep it to that side. It also will help the spacing not like pull to the outside of the garment and show, even though the stripes are super cute. <laughs> Maybe if I'd matched them better, I could have put them on the right side of the garment. So you guys, next week, I have um, two things for Hearts Fabric to sew. Um, we could do that, or I could do something different. We have the Opium Coat by Deer and Doe Patterns. Or um, what was the little romper from something Daisy? You need chocolate. <laughs> I need lunch soon. All right, so there's my understitch, and now I'm gonna turn it to the inside. And I'm gonna make sure a little bit of this blue is showing so that I make sure this facing doesn't creep to the outside. Although that could be kind of cool, you guys. I know you guys are gonna vote for this. That's kind of cool. 
I didn't really make the facing to do that, but I think I could make it work. What do you think? It doesn't look too bad right there where it didn't match. That's pretty cool. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah. All right, I don't know why. Why does it look pink right now? Let's fix this. Let's fix this. I turned off the auto. Yeah, I knew you'd like that, Beverly. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll do that. Probably would have sewed this a little differently if I'd known I was doing that, but hey, this works. Um, I'm gonna just go around and clip a little bit. I'm just liking dragging this out. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I have this edge to feel, so it's nice and consistent. But like I said, I probably would have constructed this pattern piece, this pattern piece a little differently had I known I was gonna do this for at least the curved part. What's that? Okay, I was worried there was a snag right there. I'm a little worried about snagging this, but so far it seems to be pretty resilient to that. Is that about where? I think so. I think I'm just gonna go for it. No, I don't really want to do all this pinning stuff. All right, so. Let's do it. So do you think, I might sew this with a different color thread though. I have a really bright blue here, but maybe this, oh, that would totally work. Okay, so let's do that. You have chocolate now, what'd you get? It is, Beverly, I really appreciate that. That's what you're here for. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I bought new Halloween candy and my family doesn't know. Oh, a Kit Kat. I think I'm gonna leave the top, um, the dark, so I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. Let's see how it'll look. So I'm gonna be sewing from this side. That'll work. Okay, perfect. All right, we're ready. I'm not sure, Eliza. Did you decide to go with the wool? Oh, you're getting your firewood. I so miss wood heat. Um, I was thinking either the Deer and Doe um, um, opium coat. Opium coat? Is that what it's called? Opium jacket? That sounds totally wrong right now. Is it really opium? Um, or the kids clothes, or I could do something totally different. I'm of open. I was just asking everybody what they what they're interested in. And all they did was talk about chocolate. They had different priorities, Eliza. All right, so I don't really want to stretch this out, but I'm definitely gonna have to make sure I get my whole facing in here. I'm kind of being kind of gentle. I don't want to stretch out my hem. But I really want it to be nice and even because it'll be really obvious on the other side. Bye, Raquel. I'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. Okay, cool. Yeah, it does look really cute, doesn't it? Wait, chocolate, dark chocolate? <laughs>
Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in doing something kind of technical, and that looks a little involved, and I'm kind of craving that right now. Because if I don't get that out of my system, we're going to be making jeans again soon. <laughs> okay, bye, Eliza. Steer clear of the spiders. We used to have wood heat. I loved it. That looks pretty good, you guys, huh? Good job, Beverly. Good choice. Good night, Malin. All right. The stripes on the back are kind of fun. Cool. This looks so cute. The kids clothes. Hi, Carrie. Um, so let's see here. This is stout, man. Okay, so the kids clothes are the Daisy Dress by Poppy and Jazz. Let's see if there's a picture in here. I, I never even look at these. Isn't that terrible? Oh, yeah, there's pictures. Pretty cute. That's cute. Six to nine months old size. Oh, night, Mata. Night, Judith. <laughs> Sleep well. Yeah, I bet you did, Rachel. And it's by Poppy and Jazz. I've never heard of them, so that's cool. New pattern company to me. Oh, there's a lot of pattern pieces in here. Why is there so many? Oh, probably because it goes up to six years old. So they probably have patterns for all of them. And then the Opium Coat by Deer and Doe. You can make it with or without the belt. It's got this really interesting welt with the twist in it. Um, and the fabrics they sent were the Brussels washer linen and uh, uh, cotton for the lining. And um, so it's a lightweight coat. Oh, Beverly, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so Poppy and Jazz is by Sew Over It. You know, that's what it was. Because they said, hey, we just got the new kids patterns by Sew Over It. And then when they got here, it was Poppy and Jazz. And I was like, oh, maybe they changed their mind. But I forgot that that's what it is, Beverly. Thanks. Yeah, so fully lined with welts. Ooh. Notched collar. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, so let's do the opium coat. I'm excited. It's got, um, they sent me a fabric with, that has a snails on the lining. <laughs> oh, Poppy is her dog. Jazz is her daughter. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that's what Jazz is her son and Poppy is her daughter. Oh, okay, yeah, so it's either Jazz is her da daughter or her son. Yeah. Daughter? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be fun. That'll be good. All right, I can't wait to try this on without my um, shirt. And I think Malin is right. I should steam it, and that'll relax it. But I also think, like, leaving the hem um, free uh, lets this hang as well, you know? Might be a little thick for the pleat. But I'm, I'm willing to figure it out. I like the facing on the hem. So. Toddler size blanket sleeper. Carrie, where did I? You know what? Um, we should ask Gina. She just had a baby and she is all about the sewing. 
She's been to our stream a few times. Um, she has the, got the nurse. She's usually got the nursing baby or sleeping baby on her when she watches. And her name is spelled G Y N N A. Um, we should ask her. She might have one, Carrie. I'm gonna try and remember to ask her. Blanket sleepers, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, you guys, I think I have this out of my system, but I'm not quite sure. I may need to make another one. <laughs> Look at my, it's getting pink again. I mean, I'm a little pink because I've been eating um, homemade oatmeal cookies and my rosacea is like, no lady, it's October. I saw you eating some Halloween candy. You had a glass of wine the other day and you're going to eat homemade oatmeal cookies. You're crazy. So yeah, she's kind of a brat. <laughs> um, I, we're going to be making a lot of line coats, I have a feeling. Just one glass. Well, that's why. I love wine, but it makes me itch and it makes my skin go nuts now. Now that I live here. I live somewhere really dry. I don't know. I think it's allergens in the air. We live in the middle of like... A region where all of like the almonds you eat are grown and olives and walnuts and stone fruits and um, what else? They call almonds here almonds. <laughs> it's like a regional, um, a regional pronunciation thing for an almond. They say almond. That kind of distinguishes you as being local. It's kind of a funny quirk about this area that they think is charming and all of us outsiders sneak secretly laugh behind their backs about it. <laughs> they think we're, they think we're the like, oh my gosh, you're an outsider because you don't say almond correctly. And we're like, no. <laughs> yeah, almonds. And then this is the argument you'll hear like kids talking that will talk like argue about it. And they're like, yeah, but you don't say salmon, salmon. That's their like counter argument, which is kind of flimsy because salmon isn't spelled the same way as almond. There's no D at the end. And there's a to totally different like origins of words and everything. It's just a funny quirk regionally. There's also like play, some people will say wash, warsh. Yeah. Um, you're wanting to do a side zip. If it's a side zip on a top Terry and you're right handed, you probably want the zipper on your left side as you're wearing it. But put it wherever you want. Remember I did it on the opposite side that one time because I screwed up. It only takes me a second to figure it out every time I put that on. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, um, we have our two Completely different bowline sweaters. Sweaters? Sweatshirts? They're sweaters, right? I keep calling them sweatshirts. And I forgot my label in this one. Bummer. I think I'll just hand sew it on under here. You know what I can do, actually? Where is it? Oh, there it is. We'll just put it right here. We'll just tack it on there underneath. Just in case I forgot who made this. <laughs> they're all almonds until they're harvested. Then the L gets shaked out of them. Then they're almonds. <laughs> That's awesome, Sarah. Yeah, are you local to me? Because Blue Diamond's around here. That is really cute. That is the best and only explanation I now will take. <laughs> Were you here, Sarah, when I told them all about, like when I first moved here? And um, we we went to Patrick Ranch in Citrus Heights. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, we, I went to Patrick Ranch, which is like this like living ranch, like a living, um, it was a ranch that the family 
and put into a trust so that a, like a, a nonprofit could run and de- use as a demonstration and have as a place for people to come, right? And like then they can like demonstrate some of the techniques that were used on that ranch. And they have like a pumpkin patch and they have a blacksmithing group, which apparently my dad's a part of. I didn't even know until I was there for an event and I ran into him. <laughs> He's a blacksmither there. Well, anyway, when it was like they had the barn still there and it was kind of just like a little like desk inside this empty barn and that's where you walked in and you paid to go to the pumpkin patch and so i was the i was like this place is really cool and i was new to the area and the women were explaining it to me and they were talking about all about the ammons and how it'll be a really great place because it's going to be a great demonstration place for um ammons and and then how the and like Okay, so I can't, I can't like repeat the conversation word for word, but the way they talked, I walked away from the conversation thinking the Ammons were a local Native American tribe because they didn't say that they were a, a, something grown or harvested or farmed. They just said everything they said made it sound like oh, the way in life of... Um, Ammons and things like that and I was like all right and so I walked over to my husband and my daughter and I was like this place sounds really cool like they're trying to I'm really into agriculture it's like one of my things right so I really love things like that and so they're like I said this place is really cool they're like making this into a demonstration farm and they're going to have like all these things and um um, and then they're, oh, it's going to be a uh, like a cultural center for Native American people the Ammon people Okay, so my husband had been working here for months and my daughter had already been in school for a month. Me, I hadn't come in contact with anybody. And so this is my husband. He's like, Ammon people, huh? You should go ask him about that. (laughs) Ask him, is it for the Ammon people? And this is my daughter. She's like fifth grade at the time. She's like 10. She's like, mom, no, it's a trick. (laughs) Ammon is almond. And I was like, what? So my husband's trying to get me to go over there and be like, so how, or he had like a question he wanted me to ask, like, oh, how long, I don't know, whatever the Ammon people, you know? Because I was like, this is for the Ammon people. <laughs> my daughter's all, no. So she saved me. <laughs> Man, you guys. And I, and then I, I ever, I, I'm like, what? They say, what for the word almond? So It would have been a funny, and I would have been a quirky outsider that they would still be talking about today. So, anywho. All right, we'll just lay flat. Okay, that'll that'll work. (laughs) All right, you guys. Well, have a great weekend. If you're celebrating Halloween this month, go through the corn mazes and pumpkin patches. My daughter did that last night. She said it wasn't that great, but I'm sure it's still fun that they do it, you know. Um, finish your costumes that you're making. <laughs> I did, Vicky. The other thing here is um, a lot of this, there's a lot of street signs that are misspelled and it drives me crazy. They say a few things here that are really funny. There's a street near me and it's um, Valambrosa. And they say Valambrosia like ambrosia it's not spelled that way and they there's a main street called um esplanade that they say esplanade when it's esplanade you know but they say esplanade and if you say esplanade they make fun of you so many things and they misspell like we literally looked at houses um and two of the houses we looked at were on streets that were misspelled and i was like no we can't live here i can't live on a street name that's misspelled so i'm not even a grammar nerd quaint (laughs) oh really Rachel I have been through Wales and um, there are far less signs in English than you're letting on because I was driving through there and it was a challenge (laughs) they're very proud of their language I appreciate that but us foreigners would like to get to where we're going Cool, Dickeline. Awesome. You press the bell now. Yay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks for coming. Good luck on your project, Nicoline, and your peppermint pattern and finding a rotary knife someday. 
So I will see you guys on Wednesday where we'll, we'll, we'll cut out the opium coat. And um, they had to be changed. Yeah, and they weren't changed when I was there. <laughs> and um, let's see. I think that could end up being more than a two-part stream. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to see how involved it is. I don't know if they're asking for the belt or not either. I just do what they want. And sometimes they let me pick what I want. So, yeah, good luck. You can do it. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you Wednesday. I always miss you guys on these few days. Someday maybe we'll have more streams. I need to add one for the Australians and the New Zealanders too. So, I'm working on it. I've just got a few things. And um, like I said, I've had a relative in the hospital. So, I've just been helping out with that too. So, all right, you guys. Have a great weekend. Um, and if you're not already subscribed and you like what you see, please subscribe. You click the bell if you're on YouTube to be notified when I go live. I'm live Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. And if you want to support me, there's a link in the description to Patreon. And there's also, um, I'll be adding the Streamlabs link back. because so I think I took that out. So you can just do one-time donations. If you're on Twitch, you can link your Amazon um, account with Twitch and give me $5 called a Twitch Prime subscription. It's free to you. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and then, <laughs> is that a Welsh word, Rachel? And, um... Let's see, and if you're watching this video uploaded um, and there's some ads, consider just, you know, watching the ads because that helps me as well if you can't, you know, support in any other way. So I really appreciate it and um, I look forward to sewing with you again. Bye, guys. Thanks. <laughs>